Hello everyone and welcome back to FLOSS, our course on open source software and how it is changing the world. We are in the final parts of uh, final part of the course and today's lecture is about open source labor econom economics, which is a fancy uh, way of saying that this lecture will be about the career of software developers, that they can have an open source software projects, what it means for them, what it means for a potential employer and the benefits to be had for both, as well as how open source is changing the labor market for software developers. So let's get started by a short uh, video uh, by uh, Linus Torvalds talking about uh, having a career in open source software. Hey, welcome. I'm Linus Torvalds and I started Linux in 1991. One of the more interesting parts about Linux is how it turns out in the most unexpected places. So when I started Linux, I needed a, an operating system for my own use. And today, you find Linux everywhere, in small embedded devices, supercomputers. This technology allows you to expand into many different niches. The thing that makes Linux interesting to me is all the interesting technology, but it's also all the people involved and working in an open source project where you work with hundreds, potentially thousands of people makes the whole technology even more interesting. Hopefully this turns into an opportunity for you to find something you find really interesting to do. And one of the nice things about Linux and open source in general is that there's a lot of different things and everybody has something that you can give to the project. All right, we are back. So the video you just saw by Linus Torvalds, founder of Linux, is obviously an uh, um, advertisement video by the Linux Foundation uh, to get you engaged in open source software development. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but it also portrays basically or presents uh, the traditional uh, depiction of what motivates people to go into open source software development, which is to do something good, uh, to learn something, scratch your own itch and have, have fun. Uh, to be frank, this is really just the beginning of uh, what it means to be active in open source software development. Once you uh, take an economic perspective, which is exactly what we will be doing in this lecture. There is much, much more to be said. And it's also an active or should be an active area of research, except that almost all of the scientific research that you can find on motivations about open source software focuses on volunteers and the altruism and the fun they get out of it. Uh, and that's about it. So we will revisit some of that research later and see how much more still can and needs to be done. All right, <clears throat> so you're a software developer and here's how your work life could look like. You join a company as a, after your degree perhaps as a junior engineer and you have more or less three main uh, trajectories or career path in front of you. You could uh, stick uh, with a technical career, how you probably enter the company and uh, after a while at the company become a senior engineer, started out as a junior, then become a senior engineer, maybe become an architect or a CTO even. 
you could uh, leave a purely technical career and go into engineering management and become a project manager or engineering manager. There you could go and become an engineering director or vice president of engineering, whatever the title is at some particular company. Or you could leave uh, the uh, technical, the engineering side of things uh, in total and become a product manager. Uh, that's also a viable career options for option for technical people. Um, and beyond that, of course, you can go into sales and marketing if you really want to. So uh, that's a career as it can happen inside a company. Now, almost orthogonal to that is uh, being active and having a career in open source. And that actually has some value. So let's look at a first bit of information here. Eric Gamma, the uh, inventor of JUnit and many other good things uh, these days of Microsoft, uh, has to say about hiring developers. When I receive or receive a job application, I usually immediately follow the link uh, to any open source project that might be mentioned, review the code, invite the candidate, and eventually make an offer. A link to a code contribution to an open source software project is a great differentiator in a job application, in particular if you've got a select along among a large number. So Eric Gamma, like many other hiring managers, uh, looks at resumes of developers, looks for links to open source software projects in which these uh, developers may have been active, and looks at what they have done there. So that value or that work in an open source project is a differentiator uh, for a developer in an application uh, because it lets a hiring manager like uh, or an enlightened hiring manager like Eric Gamma uh, review the developer's work uh, independently of whatever else they might say in an interview. So we will return to that. Apparently, having a portfolio of open source project work is helpful for hiring. Let's take it like this comma. This is actually not that new. Uh, people are quite aware of it. Here you can see a screenshot from my LinkedIn uh, account or me being logged in into uh, LinkedIn, where I have a mainly or a strong technical network and when I search for committer as an open source software project committer then I will see lots of people who have put on their resume that they are open source software developers and uh, not just in general but they are committers to projects for example uh, to Apache CloudStack to the Apache Foundation the Eclipse Foundation to OpenStack and what have you apparently to these technical people, developers, it's important that next to, right next to their main employer, uh, they put that they are also developers, committers to open source projects. So um, here is a focus on one particular person who is working for Hortonworks as a member of technical staff, so an engineer. Um, and he is also, and it's equally pronounced on his resume, a member of the Apache Software Foundation. So not just a committer, he's really a member of the Apache Software Foundation, uh, but he also lists then being an active committer on the Hadoop project. Here's a first hint for what's to come, uh, because being an active committer in Hadoop meshes well with his current job at Hortonworks, which is a distributor uh, or a provider of services uh, around uh, Hadoop. So um, we can see that developers or experienced developers uh, put it on their resume next to their main job, uh, the positions they have in open source projects. And that really leads me to looking at labor economics or the careers developers can have in open source software projects. So first we will look mm. at career stages that uh, that there are, and we know them mostly already. But then we will look at the value 
that uh, having positions in open source software projects has and creates initially for the developer and then perhaps for an employer too, how that gets signaled and received to the developer market, labor market. And finally, we will look at really how that value is appropriated and used uh, by who. This lecture is loosely based on a particular paper I wrote a while back on how open source is changing the software developer's career, published uh, by IEEE Computer Software, I forgot. Uh, you can look it up on the web. So, the career path in open source is independent of any traditional developer career path inside a company. And it has these five, six stages that you already know if you've been following this uh, course. So you have a project or you can have, a developer can have a project uh, career where initially you might be a user, then might become a contributor by way of a contribution that gets accepted to a project. And if you only do this often enough and the people and the project is looking for new people, you might be given commit rights and thereby become a committer to the project. The uh, progression from user to contributor is an implicit promotion because whatever you contributed gets accepted and that's it. While the uh, promotion from contributor to committer is an explicit one. It only happens after, usually only happens after sustained work by the developer hard work, high quality work, and usually the existing committers have to agree on making you committer or the developer a committer, which requires a vote and is an explicit decision that is often then announced with quite some fanfare and announced to the mailing list, etc. Now, as mentioned in prior lectures, the open source foundations have added a second foundational career path. Uh, and so the developer who is a committer and leader of an open source project in the context of a foundation, or for example, an industry platform, uh, might then also become a member of the project management committee. Foundations have made a distinction now between being a committer and being a project management committee member. Uh, where committers uh, really do quality assurance and some of the work, while project management committee members are working on the project roadmap and marketing, etc. There's usually, though, a strong overlap between being a committer in a project and being a project management committee member. As part of that PMC, project management committee, uh, a developer could also become the leader of uh, the project, management committee and project, and uh, giving him or her wider visibility and recognition for the position and in particular then the task of coordinating this particular project with other projects. Remember, foundations are often set up to maintain and shepherd and guide and develop not just one project, but a whole industry, but a whole industry platform. So there's a fair bit of managerial coordination work to be done between different components so that they play well together. And so finally, uh, after uh, leading a PMC uh, or maybe even leading multiple, uh, a developer could become a foundation member, which uh, the meaning of which varies a little bit by foundation. So in the Apache Foundation, for example, it means that uh, they more or less become coaches for newcomers, new projects, and other people. Uh, but it does give them broad recognition for their work because it really means they've been at it for a long time, are well networked, and are very visible within the various project communities of that foundation. So uh, again, this is a completely independent path of a traditional software developer career inside a company uh, that a developer can take steps in uh, as part of the open source software uh, engagement. So, and again, uh, this has impact or meaning for getting hired. So here's Christy Bonham of uh, Google, uh, running Google's open source office, and he has to say about hiring a software developer. 
open source software strategic to Google, we hire a great number of open source software developers. Uh, contributing to open source demonstrates that developers are able to code in the real world in ways other developers may not necessarily find it easy to match. It's a great or the ultimate referral. So from Eric Gamma, we already heard how listing your open source projects on your resume makes it easy to validate some or look at some of the work you have done and assess you. And now Christy Bona adds to that, that not only does it show your abilities, it really shows that you can do more and other things than just regular developers. And uh, naturally, with companies engaging more and more in open source, any such ability will also be more important to an employer. So then, what does it really mean to be active in open source uh, from an economic perspective? So uh, here are the three main values created um, first for the developer and then possibly for the employer. So first of all, the developer uh, shows their technical skills and they are verifiable because it's public, openly accessible work. Also, the developer shows their competencies by working and beyond just showing them, they get what I call here peer certified because by engaging in open source and acquiring positions, it's the other people, your peers, who actually uh, confirm or certify that you have these abilities. So it's not just showing some ability, it's actually having others confirm those abilities, say by making you a member of a project. And depending on that position, a developer can ultimately acquire power and influence. So then, these are the top three, top level three uh, values that a developer acquires, and we will look at their meaning over the rest, over the course of the next uh, slides. So first, uh, the most straightforward one, verifiable technical skills. Uh, there are two types of them. Uh, first of all, or the easiest step, or the simplest step is technical skills uh, that have been verified uh, by, um, by the developer being active in a particular project, but uh, it's of no relevance to the employer. So when it says the independently of a project, it means uh, that the that a possible employer does not care about what of a project is that a developer is active in. And then again, from an employer's perspective, the other type is technical skills in a particular project of relevance to an employer. So in general, technical skills here means uh, a developer acquired them in a project and it's verifiable because the anyone can go to these projects and take a look at the program code the developer wrote or the bug reports they wrote or the documentation they wrote, etc. Uh, but some of these projects are just not relevant for an employer, but nevertheless it demonstrates the technical skills of the developer. And some of these projects are very relevant for an employer and hence the employer actually cares about what particular project the developer has verifiable skills in. Obviously from a hiring perspective, um, having skills in a project that an employer cares about is more important than uh, having skills in a project the developer, the, the employer does not care about. Anyway, this brings us uh, to a first short interlude on that little research that's available and that goes beyond any notes on altruism in developers. It's the signaling hypothesis by Lerner and Tyrol, uh, a seminal paper, uh, even though a bit and a uh, seminal paper in, uh, in open source research. And the authors uh, wondered what makes developers contribute to open source software projects. So the authors suggested, being economists, suggested that developers who spend spare time, free time on development, on developing open source software, so they are not making money, 
where they could have been making money if they had picked up another paid job for that, that these developers are signaling to the labor market their abilities called marketable skills to future employers. So the compensation for the uh, lost opportunity of making money in the closed source software development project uh, is the value of the signaling of their abilities to future employers were, if they were not doing that, future employers would not be able to judge as easily how good a particular developer is. See, this is one of the things we are headed to. How does a hiring manager, again, like Eric Gamma, look at a developer? If all the developer can say is, I had a programming job at company XYZ, and, but sadly, I cannot show you any of the code, then the employer has to believe the developer. Now, in the case of open source software development that some developer might do on the side, the employer can now look at the code. How well written is it? How complicated or complex is it? What algorithms have been employed? How well is the object-oriented design and all of that? And by writing this in the public as part of an open source project, it is demonstrated and here verified uh, verifies the skill set of the developer. And that's the value, according to Lorna and Tyrol, of signaling uh, the marketable skills to future employers because then that future employment will be easier to attain, to achieve. So um, here is Martin Rikos, the uh, CEO of MySQL and currently of HackerOne, uh, talking again about hiring developers. From a software vendor's perspective, open source work is a definitive plus. If the developer even contributed to our open source products, it increases their chances of being successful at our company. Ramp up time will be shorter and we know they are a better fit. All of this leads us to prefer open source software developers than hiring. So we had these, uh, different, we had these two steps here. Eric Gamma talked about uh, just the development pro project portfolio of a software developer and that he could look at it and assess how good a developer is. Now Martin Mikros adds to that uh, that if those developers contributions are to projects of relevance, say the products, open source products of a company, then that developer will be even less of a hiring risk um, much more likely to be successful at the company and hence it leads to a preference for hiring those developers uh, when compared with say closed source software developers who have nothing to show uh, for them with respect to the open source projects that the company that's trying to hire them or considering hiring them is interested in. So it's this first step general verifiable technical skills and then verifiable technical skills of projects or for projects of particular relevance to the uh, employer. All right, so after technical skills that a hiring manager can assess in, by looking at the code someone wrote and put on GitHub or SourceForge, we can now, uh, we want, I now want to move on to look at the social aspects of uh, being an open source software developer, which is the relationship inside a software development team, an open source project, or what I call here peer certification or peer confirmation of uh, technical skills, step one, social competencies, step two, and leadership competencies. Competency, competencies. <laughs> so first is not only can you look up the code, that someone wrote. It is um, also confirmed by other people. So that's what I mean by peer uh, confirmation. Uh, the other people in a project um, confirm that uh, by making you, by giving, by accepting your patches, making you a contributor, or by giving you commit status, making you a committer, uh, they confirm that they, who know this particular project best, may much better typically than a hiring manager, that 
they confirm that those technical skills are real, so they peer confirm. And that in addition also reduces the hiring risk. So when I say hiring risk here, I mean the risk that a hiring manager makes a wrong decision because of uncertainty in making that decision. There's always a probability that the assessment is wrong. But any such additional outside information reduces that risk, which later on we will see that turns into a potentially higher salary for the developer. So um, these verifiable technical skills uh, become peer confirmed and are more certain because of the software development team confirms uh, that you're a good developer. So here's a venture capitalist, Rachel Chalmers of Ignition Partners, uh, saying how they look at the evaluation of startups. And she writes, so she uh, told me, when we look at a startup, we look at the GitHub repositories, we look at Olo.net, now OpenHub, uh, we drill down to the level of individual developers. It informs our investment decision. That fact alone gives open source software developers significant leverage in negotiating their position, salary, and benefits with uh, startups. So on uh, peer confirmation, we looked at technical skills so far, and um, this shows up in the open source public data footprint that developers leave and next to hiring and established companies it also has for example the benefit that venture capitalists also look at that and probably the more qualified they consider the developers of a startup are more likely to fund that startup which in turn gives the developer who is uh, a founder of that startup or an early employee of that startup um, gives that developer a better position again for salary, but in the case of startups, perhaps also equity or at least uh, stock options. Uh, how do these venture capitalists or hiring managers for that purpose uh, look at uh, any such developer? Well, uh, there is there is the raw data out there on GitHub and what have you. And now, or for a long time, there also have been websites that make it easy to assess a developer. So here you can see Olo uh, or OpenHub, uh, as it's now called. Um, and we can see a view of a particular project called Collect uh, B. We just have the founder in class and uh, talk about his uh, open source experiences. And this website gives us a short summary of the project, how alive it is, etc., etc. Of interest here is not the project, but that there is a correlated or second website where not only can hiring managers or venture capitalists look at a project, they can also look at the developers in that project. So here's the uh, review of uh, that person, Florian Forster, who just gave a talk in our FLOSS course um, from an open hub uh, perspective. So you can see their development. Uh, you can see here the kudos they received from other developers making the peer confirmation, um, not just an issue of being member of a team, but also other people giving you thumbs up or kudos for that matter as well as giving again a basic overview or good overview of technical skills and projects involved, etc. So um, going back here, we had peer confirmation of technical skills. Uh, not yet I talked about peer confirmation of social skills. See, if you're a developer and you move on from being a contributor to being a committer, you now uh, become uh, important rights in the project and you will only be given those rights if people do not worry that you are basically a difficult person to work with. So by taking steps on the career path of an open source software developer, people are not only very confirming your technical skills, they are also confirming your social skills that you're a person that one can work with because they would not make you committer 
if you work just unbearable. So taking steps in an open source project from contributor to committer and even on to a program management committee member and leader and foundation member means that you're a socially capable person, which is also important for a hiring manager and certainly important for a startup, which tend to, in the early stages, fail because of social strife within the team. So social abilities, getting along with other people, being effective with other people is super important for the success of, what, of about anything. And open source projects who give you status who help you along a career path are a good confirmation by other people that you are socially capable who wouldn't do it if uh, they didn't actually and honestly believe that. And so beyond, uh, beyond just being a good team player and socially easy to get along with, then of course um, having the position of committer or even project management committee member or leader are positions of authority so beyond being easy to get along with they also clearly demonstrate your leadership ability so it's an additional step first it's general social competence and second it's leadership abilities that your peers confirm as they give you status and positions inside open source projects all right so um, here's another thing that um, senior developers, in this case a distinguished engineer of, uh, of Mozilla, Robert O'Callaghan, said open source contributors tend to believe in and practice the value that characterize open source projects such as community, meritocracy and transparent government. Hiring those people strengthens those values within your corporate culture. So those social skills that you demonstrate and perhaps partly acquire or, or refine, hone and refine in open source software projects, those uh, skills are valuable, not just in these open source projects, but inside companies. So that was perhaps obvious, they are valuable uh, for any teamwork, but the particular skills now, according to O'Callaghan, that you learn in open source projects are sometimes viewed as novel or new or desirable values to have and practices to be able to carry out within companies. Community, meritocracy, transparency, these are values or behavioral attitudes of people that companies would like to see among their employees and they are particularly strong and giving people a leg up in hiring being hired in open source projects. So you are not only showing now, getting peer confirmed, your social abilities, you're actually showing social abilities that are highly in demand by companies. So what you see here is also closely related to a new trend in software engineering. Well, not so much a new trend, has been around for quite a while, but called inner source software development, the use of open source best practices inside companies. And people who come in from the outside with a strong open source background are obviously people who are able to participate and lead an inner source project as something that uh, the leading companies uh, would like to see happen uh, in the ranks in the development organizations. All right, so next to um, going back to the peer confirmation we had technical skills getting peer confirmed. We had the uh, social abilities getting peer confirmed. And I also already pointed uh, to the uh, leadership skills that you get peer confirmed, which are well a demonstration that you're probably a good leader, which is also of benefit to a company who hires you. Now, next to this peer confirmation, uh, and after peer confirmed leadership comes the value, the actual value of having an important position in an open source project. What does it mean that you are the leader of a project management committee and can strongly influence the direction perhaps of that project? 
is there value in there? What value is in there? What's the economic value? Does it matter to anyone? So I will now talk about what it means to have that position of power and influence inside a project and what the accompanying visibility to the community of that project <clears throat> and perhaps beyond uh, that means. So uh, this is the second part in this lecture where there actually is a little bit of research to draw on. Specifically, there were two studies, uh, the original Apache Committer study and the CT, like in the German magazine CT, salary survey. So uh, the uh, Apache Committer study looked at what it meant to be, in terms of salary, what it meant to be uh, a committer to projects of the Apache Software Foundation. And what it found was that there was, after controlling for everything else, like how good a developer you are, etc., what it found that people just by the virtue of their committed status had a higher salary than those who were equally competent but did not have that committed status. The study does not say by how much uh, your salary or a developer's salary was higher, only that it was. Um, but uh, it's probably not just a single dollar or something. Anyway, so the Apache committer status for Apache projects showed higher salary just because you were a committer. Now the CT salary survey by uh, B. Beiser, um showed that people believed, um, the respondents of the survey believed that open source had a beneficial career had a beneficial effect on their career, but there was no recognizable effect on the salary. Um, so we have two conflicting, uh, conflicting statements here, and I don't know how to resolve them, except for pointing to the observation that one study, the first one, was specifically focused on Apache Software Foundation projects, which are highly supported by companies and make up an important industry platform and are probably com almost completely now being developed commercially, meaning the people are being paid to work on it. While the CT salary survey well reached readers of the CT magazine, which, uh, and there was no restriction on which open source projects was acquired about. So whether it was an Apache project or grandma's photo album, uh, we don't know. Uh, so my hunch here is that if the second study would have focused on economically important and commercially supported projects, it might have found the same as the Apache Committer study. Anyway, going back to that Committer study, uh, Ilhan uh, state the wage of contributors, the salary of contributors with rank committer or above is an average about 29% higher than that of other developers. Actually, okay, so here it is. Uh, 29%, not just a dollar, 29% higher than that of other developers. After controlling for education, blah, blah, blah. So uh, suggesting a causal connection between being a committer and having a 29% on average higher salary. So nice. How do you get there? Well, um, it really uh, makes a difference uh, whether it's an open source or a closed source. In open source software development, you earn that status, while in companies it gets assigned. Ideally, it's also earned, but more likely, uh, well, it's assigned. Okay, uh, here is Justin Aaron Kranz of the Apache Software Foundation and also Capital One right now, I believe, uh, talking about the value of the position uh, inside Apache Software Foundation projects. At the Apache Software Foundation, members of the PMC are recruited from project contributors. As the recognized stewards of the project, all PMC members wield significant power over the project through the power of veto. So, you can veto things if you disagree and need to make an argument, but it's significant power that rests in that particular position. 
that we get a pointer to. So uh, these positions then translate, or this position or multiple positions a developer might accumulate, they transform or tra lead to a particular value for an employer. So here I try to uh, tease it apart. The position a developer might have has various benefits, which then transform or lead to value to an employer. So um, a developer who is engaged with a project makes the project more predictable to the employer. Uh, a developer who has an important position uh, with a project has more influence on it. Um, a developer in a project actively working on it uh, makes external third parties believe the employer is, has higher competence because they employ uh, key people of a project. Uh, the employer gets uh, uh, from the developer position uh, they sponsor a higher goodwill or more goodwill from the community. After all, they are uh, supporting the project. And in general, they are um, appear to be more attractive uh, employers because hey, uh, good open source developers love good open source software development and apparently this employer is supporting and allowing developers to keep working in open source projects. All right, so let's take a let let's take this a little bit more slowly and in steps. So the value number one that accrues to an employer is more and easier sales. Actually, I wanted to go here first. So the value that accrues is faster, better, cheap. The first value is faster, better, cheaper development. Uh, the holy grail of uh, the continuous goal of software develop, make, development, make it faster, make it better, make, you know, make it cheaper. So why is that? Well, if the company sponsors developers inside a project, uh, they make it, uh, it becomes more predictable to them because they have people on the ground in the project. Uh, that inside view uh, lets the company recognize faster what may happen respond to that, adjust their plans, align their own goals and their own software product with that open source project that they depend on. So there's less of a gap between what an open source project does and what a product does based on that open source uh, project. Also, uh, if a company employs or sponsors a particular developer, they naturally have some more influence on that project. Uh, in particular, if it's a leadership position, their developer or developers employ. And so not only will they understand faster, better than their competition where the project is headed, they actually do form the future direction, the roadmap for that project and thereby support better alignment of the company's products with the open source uh, project. All of which is to say uh, things are faster because there's less of a lag between what the project does and what the products do. Uh, it means the products get better because they are more nicely, more neatly aligned with the open source project. And of course, uh, the lack of lag um, makes things cheaper, the projects get used more effectively, uh, all of that lowers uh, costs uh, for software development. So faster, better, cheaper development results from being active in critical open source projects, critical to the company's uh, product. So next is more and easier sales. So if a company sells products based on open source projects and it engages in those open source projects that are most critical to the success of their products, well, it has various positive benefits here, more and easier sales. So first of all, the company, to the extent that it's visible that they build on these open source projects, maybe because they provide services around these open source projects, the company is assumed to have a <coughs> higher competence than perhaps a competitor uh, because they employ key people of that project. 
if it's your people who move the project forward, then obviously your company is the one that knows how to develop good software around or based on that project. So uh, there's higher assumed competence and hence any uh, potential customer who, uh, who sees that will think that you're particularly able and will go to you or and all will be willing to pay a premium for your services because of your higher assumed or real competence. Um, also, that increased uh, influence you have on the project makes you more attractive to any customer because there's less of a likelihood that something goes wrong because you're always neatly and nicely aligned with that particular project. So if your customer is uh, uses you or purchases your say use your services for an open source project they are using, then uh, you can warn them earlier or through you they can influence that project to the extent that it's compatible with community and project goals, but in general avoid any big gap between what they need and where the project is headed. Finally, uh, the company employing open source software developers for that obviously creates goodwill with the community project because they make the project happen. And because of that engagement and the resulting goodwill, um, they are much more visible. People talk about them uh, in, in a positive way, which creates visibility, which is helpful for marketing and sales which makes sure the company is the one people go to or the developers, the company employees are the ones who get asked to give talks at conferences, all of which means higher visibility, better reputation to potential customers who then become real customers, meaning more and easier sales again. All right, so after faster, better, cheaper development and more and easier sales, the third final reason is that Open source engagement uh, with relevant projects makes it easier to recruit developers because the company employing or sponsoring open source software developers appears to be a more attractive employer, in particular to open source software developers because obviously it's an interesting place to work with interesting people who get to be active in open source software development who then also can reach out uh, to potential new recruits. Same thing with goodwill to the community. Again, the company uh, appears to be an attractive and good place to work for, meaning, meaning developers are more likely to think highly of that company, which in turn makes it easier for that company to recruit them. So, one more qualification is these different values accrue to first developers, then companies, back to developers, then in different degrees, to the different degree, depending on various parameters. So one parameter, of course, is how important is the particular open source project to a company. And if, say, the project is not very important, then it's less valuable to be a developer there. And if it's very important, then it's more valuable to be a developer in such a project. And then the value that the position or the value that a developer receives from being an open source developer also depends on the role they actually play lay in a particular project, whether they are a user, contributor, or committer or PMC member, etc. etc. So you can see it laid out here. Um, being a user in a, of a project of no relevance to a company has no benefit. Being a user of a project that has some or high relevance to a company is somewhat useful because it demonstrates, allows a developer to demonstrate their skills. So that reduces the hiring risk which reduces the uh, uncertainty discount that's prevalent in salary negotiations. And so there's some benefit here. More importantly, of course, if the developer is a contributor, 
then the peer confirmation they receive for projects of little or no relevance to the company is already somewhat beneficial in the sense of, uh, of uh, reducing uncertainty and hiring decisions and a higher salary. And being a contributor in a project of high significance, well, again, it's peer confirmation and verifiable skills for technical skills, for social abilities, etc. And finally, if a developer is a committer or in another or even higher form of leadership, well, uh, the peer certification or confirmation uh, is relevant for any project, not just those of economic relevance to the uh, employer, but of course, in particular, if the project is economically relevant, then all of the things accrue, verifiable skills, peer confirmation, and the position of power inside the project that make the developer in their role as committer are more, most attractive for an employer. Here is what uh, a former director of the Eclipse Foundation and developer of Eclipse projects has to say, Kai-Uwe Metzel, now of Microsoft. My contributions to the Eclipse project resulted in a high visibility in the Eclipse developer community. Pretty much every offer I received during those years from potential employers explicitly referred to my reputation in the Eclipse project. So kai -Uwe had an important position and employers not only valued, they valued that, they only found him because of that position. All right, so how does it translate? How does this economic benefit that a company or an employer can derive from a developer, how does that translate back to value for the developer? Well, uh, the value to the developer is a higher salary. So there's value in that position. So value in the verified technical skills, value in the peer confirmation of technical skills, social capability competencies and leadership competencies, and value in the position of power and influence. All of that means a higher salary to the developer. It also means higher job security because it's a scarce resource uh, to have these positions and skills. And in general, it also means having a richer job experience because you're being used and employed more widely. Not only do you work in company internal projects or on the products, you also typically keep working on your open source uh, engagements because that's where some of your value is that the company wants to maintain, so they will not remove you from your position in the open source projects, quite the opposite. So you have a diverse and ultimately richer job experience if you're a successful open source software developer. Let's take a step back here. Uh, so I talked about the specific value of being a developer, first to a company, then back to the developer. And now I would like to speculate a little bit about the consequences for the developer labor market. At this stage, this is still mostly speculation. We do not know how it will play out, but we can make some informed guesses as to how it will play out. So first of all, the labor market, the developer labor market and any other one is a highly or is a asymmetric uh, market. There are much less employers than there are employees. Even in these days of high demand for IT personnel, there are still many more people looking for a job than there are employers. Traditionally in this uh, market, the thing that's being paid for, your abilities, uh, it has remained hidden because you work for a company, you program code, and if it was closed source software code, as it is in the traditional case, it wasn't visible. So um, there was a fairly high uh, hiring risk. How good are you really? And open source alleviated some of that because it will publicly show how good you are, etc. So in that labor market, we have seen that having contributor status uh, is helpful in the form of some 
verification and peer confirmation of abilities, but it does not appear to me to be a sustainable advantage because contributing is comparatively easy if you're capable. Anyone can become a contributor solely by having the contribution accepted into a project. Now, it is much harder to get a patch into the Linux kernel than it is to get a patch into some random project, but it is possible to make contributions and point future developers to it. There's no barrier to entering this market, if you will, and no barrier to acquiring this uh, verification and peer confirmation of your abilities. Now, the committer status is a status that you only receive after continued, prolonged quality work for a project. And whether people think about it like that or not, doesn't matter, the effect is the same. That status has economic value and will remain a scarce resource because most projects will not make more people than are needed committers because it's risky to make someone a committer. So usually people keep it limited to a few those who need for the project. So as a consequence, mature project who have that core developer uh, circle of developers who don't need additional committers will not accept new committers or will not will make it much, much slower to accept new committers. Once you have it, it's not easily taken away, though of course you can retire. And so having committer status with the positive effects of a higher salary, for example, in the case of economically relevant projects, that committer status is a sustainable positional advantage that developers can acquire and will not lose easily. So um, as the world is building more and more on open source software projects and components, um, these components have no little barriers for contributors. There are no barriers or little barriers for learning about them because tutorials are free, freely available for these components. You don't have to pay an expensive price as with closed source software to learn about them or even get certified for the components. Anyone can, can join the market of services or development for these components. So we will have the low cost labor countries join this market and make create competition for the high price uh, countries. Now being a committer as a status that you achieve and that is not widely available to anyone, everyone, uh, that may remain and that may be a second layer, a uh, positional advantage for those who are in it, that is not easy to acquire. And that is one that's already been acquired mostly by Western developers who were there early, who have the social and collaborative values that make it easy for them to engage in open source projects. And so they will uh, they will benefit from, from this. So it's of course much less, uh, the numbers of committers are much less, much lower even in the West when compared with the overall developer population. So it's only a small subset of developers who will have this benefit. So I speculate that maybe the developer labor market will become somewhat of a two-class society, with regular developers being more easily replaced as open source becomes more dominant and um, collaboration mores and practices are more widely shared, while those uh, who have important status will be able to benefit. Now you might wonder, well, if that's so, how can I become a committer quickly? <laughs> and of course, it's not that easy. Uh, first of all, you simply need to be technically competent. Um, not always, but mostly that's uh, technical skills, programming skills, etc., etc. Uh, but also practical knowledge of how systems are built, how teamwork is done, how open source pro processes are run. 
Next to the technical skills, of course, the social skills are also, if not more so, important. So you need high quality communication collaboration skills. Really, it's as basic as being able to write well done, concise, focused, sober emails uh, and build and demonstrate your leadership capabilities beyond that. So I think social skills ultimately will be more important. Once you have basic technical skills in place, you should try to excel at the social skills as marginal, the marginal value of uh, improving your technical skills um, falls drastically when compared with the marginal value of beefing up your social skills. Can you just, uh, how do you become a committer? Um, well, it takes a lot of work potentially, but it depends on the project. Ultimately, this is almost an entrepreneurial activity. The developer needs to pick an open source project that they want to specialize in, where they want to be committer. But of course, they obviously want to pick one of future high economic value. How to know that? Nobody knows. That's the entrepreneurial or the guesswork, if you will. And so there's good, and so on, so that you have to have a hunch as to how important the project will be. Uh, since each, each project has a life cycle, it's much, much easier to get committer status early on in a project, but then you need to make a decision early on about the assumed economic value of a project. It's much easier than later on when the project is maturing, where it, its growth means, or its lack of growth or slow growth means that it just doesn't need as many new committers as it might have needed during the earlier phase. So it's really um, thinking hard about the prospects of a particular project before you invest your time and try to become a committer in that. So um, our conclusion is that there's a new career path um, where developers uh, who are open, who have an open source career and open source positions uh, in the short run may improve their wages, but uh, salaries, but in the future or in the long run should strive for important positions in order to sustain that advantage. Um, so um, we, let's review. Uh, you can go through various stages, which create value for the developer, the de employer, and then back to the developer. But well, the value to the developer basically is a higher salary, but also higher job security and a richer job experience. The company's benefits are faster, better, cheaper development, the usual holy grail, uh, but also more and easier sales if the projects are relevant, economically relevant to the company, as well as more effective uh, recruiting. This uh, concludes it uh, from me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, good luck with your own potential.